I uh, always try to tell myself, don't buy any more books, but um, here we are. Hello, my name's Alana and welcome to my channel. And on this channel, we talk about, well, I talk to myself in a room, to you <laughs> about um, my favorite books, what I'm reading, book reviews, booktube, all that booktube jazz. So today I am just gonna be going over some or I thought it would be fun to share some books. Why am I hunched forward? Pasture, darling, pasture. In today's video, I'm going to be sharing some recent books that I've acquired. Actually, all of these books were purchased in December, but with UPS, USPS, FedEx, etc. Shipping slower these days due to the thing that shall not be named. <laughs> um some of them arrived by mid-January and also a couple of them were gifts so I thought they would be fun to share but other than that I other than this I really am planning to really curb the amount of books I bring into this into this house this year because space is not infinite so hopefully this will be not I mean it's just kind of like a quick video um not super long so and if you've read any of these books I'd be interested to know if you enjoyed them. First, I've got Butcher's Crossing by John Williams. Also, disclaimer, a lot of these books that I'm going to be showing, I think at least half of them I plan to read this year. So that's one reason why I purchased them is because I didn't have them and I don't use my library because I annotate and I don't think that they would appreciate that. So Butcher's Crossing by John Williams. I've only read Stoner by John Williams, which is which was one of my top reads of 2021 and so I hope to read Butcher's Crossing this year he has one other novel called Augustus but I won't be reading that one this year so and look at this cover mm. yes so Butcher's Crossing by John Williams I got I talked in my reading goals for 2022 video about reading A Gentleman in Moscow so I'd figured out I figured out I decided that I would go ahead on and purchase all of Amor Tolls' novel, so we have Rules of Civility. This was not the initial cover that I wanted. Like, I'm that person that painstakingly searches for the exact cover that I want, but whatever, it works. I'm not gonna be a snob about it. And I do kind of like this retro black and white Empire State Building, very New York. I'm feeling it. Mrs. March by Virginia Fato. I believe that's how you pronounce it. Fato. This was a recent release. I want to say late fall or very early winter 2021. This this hasn't been out very long. I don't even think it's been out for six months if it's been out earlier than that and somehow I missed it. I saw somebody post on this on my Instagram feed. The cover really intrigued me because it's very vibrant and you've got this roach chilling on her thigh. I hate roaches. Man, they're sneaky little things. And this is the UK cover. The American cover I was not feeling, but look at that roach on the back. Man, that's creepy. But I just think that the cover is really striking. And when I looked into it, this is a novel about a... It's so funny. I'm talking about what this one's about. I didn't even talk about what the other two were about. I'm not even going to go back and fix it. Um, but it's why I picked this one up, it's a psychological thriller, which I don't typically gravitate towards. <sighs> But the, there, it pays a bit of homage to Daphne du Maurier's Rebecca, which I really enjoy. And I enjoy novels where the main character kind of spirals into this slow but steady mental decline. Gives me Alfred Hitchcock vibes, which I can always appreciate. And so in this particular novel, the main character, Mrs. March, her husband is a novelist. And in his most recent novel, the it's suspected or she suspects after somebody brings it to her attention that the main character or protagonist in his most recent novel is based off her but that main character is not someone that she would want to be modeled after and so now she gets paranoid and she starts to rapidly decline rapidly slow but steady i'm contradicting myself she declines mentally um and there's this this layer of the novel in which you don't really know whether what she's imagining is real or not. I love that kind of thing. Very Alfred Hitchcock 
The Turnout by Megan Abbott, 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 I don't know. Um, This was an impulse buy for me. I almost never impulsively buy books. Um, Before I purchase a book, I do quite a bit of research on that book to make sure that I even want to add it to my collection just because I we all read books with the hope that we're going to like that book but there's something in my eye um I mean we have some misses every now and then right but I mean as a person who is an amateur very amateur ballerina (laughs) um the cover in the name immediately stuck out to me and I was like what is this it's a psychological thriller and ballet is at the center these two sisters take over the ballet school that their mother founded their parents died tragically 12 years prior to them taking over the school and one their one of their husbands also helps them run this school there it's the lead up to the nutcracker season and then there's something suspicious that happens and then from there things start to unravel and I've heard from the reviews that this book gets pretty dark and twisted so I was just so fascinated and look at the cover I mean it's it's ballet pink I couldn't resist but I don't know I'm getting black swan vibes and I'm here for it I've seen black swan once and I think once was enough it was weird I've talked about A Gentleman in Moscow. It's on my 2022 reading list. It's one of my priority reads. And this is one of the books that I purchased in the month of December. And I specifically tracked down this cover because, man, look at it. It felt good. It felt good. I'm really excited about this. I anticipate this being one of my top reads of the year. So the other Amora tools that I figured since I'm going in, going on and buying The Rules of Civility and The Gentleman in Moscow. Why not add his most recent release, The Lincoln Highway? I'm not 100% sure what this novel is about. There's a road trip, I think. Yeah, there's a road trip. I didn't even really look into what the book was about. I just figured I'd complete my collection, collection of all the Mortals novels that are currently published because I have a feeling I'm going to like this author. This is not helpful, is it? I'm not, I'm barely talking about what some of these books are about. <laughs> Two of these were Christmas gifts. By one was it? One by my, one of my close friends, Tanya, if you're watching this, how you doing? Um, <laughs> Paintings in Proust. I am reading the first volume of In Search of, In Search of Lost Time. In Search of Lost Time. This year, I've actually already started it by the time I recorded this. Literally, I started it today as of me filming this and I'm only 22 pages in and the writing in Swan's way is like lucid dreaming in the best way possible. It's stream of consciousness and I'm, I'm here for it, but I wanted to supplement it with, I almost dropped this on my face. I wanted to supplement it with paintings in Proust by Eric last name there. Cause I don't want to butcher it. And basically what it t- does is it covers all the paintings that are mentioned in In Search of, Lo- in Search of Lost Time and all its volumes. So this is will not just cover Swan's Way, but volume one through, I believe there are six volumes. And this book is stunning. It stays on the coffee table in the living room just because it's so pretty to look at. And I mean... It's got the paintings and description of that painting, who the artist is. Even if you are not planning to ever read In Search of Lost Time, if you were an art fan, I think this would be lovely to have, at, to lovely to own. So yeah, the visual companion to In Search of Lost Time. This was another Christmas gift. This, my uncle sent this to me spontaneously. I was not expecting that, so I really appreciate that. Black Ballerinas. My Journey to Our Legacy by Misty Copeland. This book is huge. Misty Copeland is um, a principal dancer for the American Ballet Theater in New York City. And they're considered one of the top ballet uh, ballet companies in the world, correct me if I'm wrong, but they're definitely (laughs) well-known. And Misty Copeland has definitely been a ballerina that has gotten a lot of acclaim, not only for her skill as a dancer, but 
the significance that she's played as a, a, a black woman who's a dancer. And unfortunately, I haven't been able to ever see her dancing. I've tried to see her twice, both times she was injured. But that's okay, because the people who had to fill in for her, phenomenal. There is not a bad dancer at ABT, okay? Anytime you go and somebody has to fill in for somebody, you're still gonna get a treat. But um, this is stunning. I do plan to read this sometime this year, because it's, you know, you could sit, you could potentially, well, there's a lot of text on that page, but potentially read this in one sitting or a couple of sittings, depending on how long you want to savor it. But this is stunning. Look at the, illust the illustrations are gorgeous. There's another dancer in here that I really, that I do follow on Instagram because I just love the way that she dances. Nikki Fogo, who just became a principal, I believe, for, um, in San Francisco, San Francisco, San Fran's ballet company. So... I'm excited to flip through this and I think the watercolor paintings are beautiful. Last but not least, but probably my favorite book purchase of all time. Um, this was my Christmas gift to myself. I always buy myself a Christmas gift. I'm a big fan of buying yourself Christmas gifts because at the end of a year, you should treat yourself. I treat myself all year round because life is hard <laughs> and you know, life is short, but um, I have been wanting to purchase a really, really nice set of the Lord of the Rings trilogy and The Hobbit for quite some time. I've been searching for at least two to three years of updated editions. I actually have never read The Hobbit. I don't own The Hobbit. Well, I didn't own The Hobbit. And the copies of the Lord of the Rings trilogies that I have or trilogy that I have, my language is messed up today. Oh, um, I've had them since I was in the sixth grade. They're, they're the masked paperback editions with covers from the Two Towers. They're, they're, those books are 20 years old now. Can you believe Lord of the Rings came out 20 years ago? The movies? Oh, man, but I really wanted to treat myself, invest in, whatever you want to call it, copies or a set of The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings trilogy that would last a lifetime. I'll never get rid of these. And so this set was released, I wanna believe in 2020. This box set, this, this is heavy. Look how stunning. This is, these are illustrated hardcovers and I'm gonna pull each one out just to show you how beautiful they are. They're heavy. Um, they're illustrated by Alan Lee, who was the, or yeah, he was the illustrator for the trilogy in the Hobbit movie, in the Hobbit movies. So these are some of the prettiest books that I own. But let's look at the, look at that. It's so pretty. Oh, there we go. Trolls. And those are the trolls. I'm not calling anybody here a troll. Look at how stunning that is. This, these books are hefty. Look at the gold. Um, what is that texture called? I'm, I'm just having complete brain fog. We've got this really nice gold lettering. Look at the illustrations. Each cover on the back has a different illustration than the cover in the, than the illustration on the front. Hard cover. Each one has a map. Each map in these books are different and each book is different comes with a little ribbon book uh, bookmark book graph the typeface is really good colored headings it smells amazing does anybody else sniff books I'm a book sniffer <laughs> um, let me see I'm gonna pull out a an illustration or show you an illustration I'm gonna have to do more in-depth pictures and maybe do a blog post and an Instagram post. Just there's Mordor, check it out. It's beautiful. Is that the spider? Yeah, that's the spider. And we've got the two towers on the back. One of the towers, really. Isengard. Again, let's pull out a random Pretty. 
Fellowship of the Ring. It's got Rivendell on the cover. The trolls on the back. What's on the back of this? Two, oh, I saw, it was the, it was Isengard. Okay. Again, let's. This might be the Misty Mountains. I mean, isn't that delightful? Smog is on the back. The Hobbit has. This is a green hardcover, and the headers in this one are green. The Hobbit has an illustration at the top of each chapter, like you would see in the Harry Potter books. And there are a lot of other illustrations in this book additionally. It's not just these full colored illustrations that the other three have. But I'll show you throughout the whole book, and not and not just at the head of each chapter, you get these little illustrations throughout the whole book that are in um, grayscale. So worth every penny. Thank you for joining in today to this very rambly, disjointed, distracted video. For some reason, it took me a while to get going, and I'm 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 feeling a bit brain. Like I've got brain fog or something. Hopefully the editing process will smooth some of it out, some of this out. So again, thank you for joining me. If you would like, please like, subscribe. It's free. <laughs> um, feel free to also follow me on Instagram if you would like to see more bookish content from me or if you would like to see the shenanigans that I post in my Instagram stories and by shenanigans 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 I just mean funny memes that I find because that's what the internet is really for and also I do write reviews for every book that I read um so there are reviews there i also have my blog link down below in case you don't have instagram and don't want to be bothered and you still want to access or read my book my thoughts on certain books i have my book reviews on that platform as well just because i know that not everybody's going to want to go on instagram so there's that again for the third time thank you for tuning into this video and i will see you guys soon